Hey, it's Pete. I'm going to show you something really exciting right now. It's a classic trading strategy called tape reading. And I got, actually got two books that I want to show you right now. One is Studies in Tape Reading and one is Tape Reading and Market Tactics. You definitely want to pick up these books. They were both written early, like 1930s in that area. Uh, but when most people think about tape reading, they think about this when somebody is actually reading the ticker tape. You ever heard of a ticker tape parade? That's exactly what it is. But what we're going to do right now is I'm going to take you behind the scenes. It's roughly a 10 minute video, which is a part of a recent coaching call where we look at time and sales in a bunch of different stocks and time and sales are where the actual transactions are happening. You see the buying pressure, you see the selling pressure, you see the amount of trades going off, but what the heck is actually going on and what trades matter, 100 share trades versus 1000 share trades versus 5000 share blocks and higher. How do you read them and how do you turn that into profitable trading opportunities where you really fine tune your entries? Enjoy this video. It's a sneak peek at one of our coaching programs. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave that comment below. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you so much. I understand from the brief conversation in Discord, this is a skill developed over time. Uh, but if possible, can we briefly review how to observe and interpret a large block order on the tape? Okay, so just for you, Tom, I during the middle of the day, I took a, um, a look at the questions and um, did some recording. So everybody just let me know that, um, let me know if you could see this video. Just give me a quick yes in, in the chat. Let me know if you could see that. Okay, so I'm gonna pause this for a second. So this is in the context of, Don's, of Tom's question. So what I set up here, now, again, obviously, this is not something I teach um, because level two in time and sales is a is a skill that takes a while to understand. And quite honestly, you really need to be watching very few stocks to be reading it. Uh, Pat Cross, who's a new member of the community, he can absolutely um, give some good insights on this during the day. You'll notice that he talks about uh, prints he'll, and, the, and the succession of the prints and that kind of thing. So when I saw Tom's question, I went into Discord, uh, I went into um, uh, my trading station, my trade station, and normally this is the time in sales that I have up on the window. This is this is um, just the regular time in sales with nothing more than 100 share prints. Then I created, I, I'm sorry, 100 share prints or larger, okay? So that's my normal one. I'm not looking at anything that prints 50 shares or anything like that. So then for this conversation, I created another time in sales for the same stock of 1,000 shares or more. And then I created a third one of 5,000 shares or more. Okay, so I just wanted to give you first context for what we were looking at in the, con in the, in the scope of Tom's um, question. So as time in sales is printing, now actually, let me stop this here for a second as well. You need to coordinate time in sales with where it's happening on the chart and where it's happening compared to the bid offer. And we're actually gonna break this down even a little bit more, okay? So a red print means it was an active sale. So somebody sold actively to the bid. It could have been a market order to get out of a stock, doesn't make a difference, could have been a limit order. But generally speaking, a red print is a, a print or a trade lower than the previous one. Generally, people say it's a sale, but it, it really the technical definition is that it's lower than the previous print. So you can see the prints coming in here. A green print is higher than the previous print. Now, what you're gonna see here, see this plus and this minus? This is where it starts to get a little screwy in today's day and age. It was, it was like this in the past, but it wasn't as crazy as this in pennies. So these yellow prints mean that it happened at that moment in between the bid and the ask at that moment. So you can actually see how AMD has a one cent spread between the bid and ask. That's pretty hard to trade in between one cent, but it's possible. So that means that people are placing orders at 8420.01, 8420.99, but they're saying it's, do you understand that? So again, just to bring that home, green is buying or a higher, higher print, a higher trade. Red is selling or a lower trade. Yellow, in the way I have it color coded here, means it happened in between the bid ask. And we'll show you some other examples of that coming up. A green block print like that means that it happened above the ask. 
So that implies urgency, implies, that's the whole key here though. So everybody understand that? You see the ask here was 18 cents and this one printed above the 18 cents. This year it was 19 cents, the bid was 18, uh, the ask was 18. So that's how you interpret the raw data in time and sales. Now, the reason I had suggested, or, or not even me suggesting it, it's just common <laughs> that um, reading the tape and reading time and sales, you need to know the stock. You need to know, and let me pause this again. You need to know what's a significant print for that stock. Is, is 4,600 a big print for AMD or is it nothing? The lower price stocks in the tens or twenties or you know, even below $10 like SoFi and a couple of those, when they're active in their in play, forty six hundred with you know hundred million shares trading during the day, it's not really that big of a print. So you need to know what a big print is for the trade that you're looking at. You need to know the stock, what's a good print, what's a small print. If you're only watching this, you're not really going to have the context for this. But let's get back to the question. Okay, so let's say right now we're watching this and it's, it's trading back and forth and you see those big prints coming in at 20. And at that point, it was above the ask. So now we're saying, okay, these bigger trades happened at 20. They're going off above the ask. So there's buyers coming in at 20 in this case. So 20 was the offer. Now it became the bid and it ticked up one tick, right? So what that means and what, what's being mentioned in that conversation, which... Fred is the one who we're referencing at this point. Fred is noticing, and I'm just going to freeze this for a second just so that we can make it super clear. He's noticing, and let's just freeze this for a second in our minds. He's noticing, let's say it's 8420 by 8421. He's noticing that there's 5,000 shares trading on the offer in green, 5,000 shares, 10,000 shares, 15,000 shares repeatedly trading on the offer. And it just stays there. So somebody's got just as much to sell as this person actively buying. So when Fred's calling that out, what he's literally saying is there's big prints going off in this stock at a particular price. And what's kind of cool about this also is you notice that those big block prints went up, first started at 18, and I can see it's actually going up from those block prints, okay? So what Fred is talking about is that he's noticing, and this is kind of cool to watch, right? I thought this was like, I, I was thinking about how to answer the question, but then I wanted to put a couple of different stocks. And so now we're gonna get a little bit of a different view where again, we'll watch this. You can see the blocks come in, but what's cool here is you can see these going off, but you start to notice these a little bit more. And what you're looking for is when they're larger size on the offer or larger size to the bid. So what Fred is talking about is he's noticing a lot of larger prints going off at the offer. And they're hitting 65, they're hitting 65. Or I kept going through different stocks just to try and give us a different view in here. So what he's noticing is offer prints or bid prints, bid prints, bid prints. And if it's not going down with those aggressive red prints or not going up with those aggressive green prints, somebody is sitting there selling. So what Fred is talking about, and that's actually a good snapshot right there. Let me see if I can pause that. So um, this was well above. So that's actually a late print. That's actually way out of the market. So that's really not a good print. That's probably something that TradeStation printed late. And you can get an idea here. The offer right now is 36 cents, two cents spread, 36 cents. The odds of 20,000 shares, 19,875 shares printing 19 cents above the offer at that moment are small. So these are also the things you got to notice. It has to be close to the bid ask. So again, I just want to keep going. I'm, I, I want to make, I want to try and talk through things while we're watching it. And, and what's kind of fun about this now is you, you could like see all of this going off and try to predict the direction it's going to go based on the prints and especially the larger prints. I threw the spy in here too, just to, so you can see that not really that many here that's normally here. Um, let me actually go through the spy. I passed this one. Coin. Coin was a good one. I think Pat called a reversal in um, coin as well today. Um, so again, getting back to the question. Where he's paying it, and look at the spread here. So getting back to the other question, by, uh, bidding into the stock, that's a 17 cent spread. I'll go in there and bid at 52.90. I'll advertise 52.90 in front of the best bid at 52.87. So I'm bidding for the stock, but I'm not paying the offer. Okay, that's very important. 
I want to keep pausing it, but I want to keep going back to the question. So what Fred is doing is he's taking the chance that all of those green prints are going off at the offer saying when this seller is done, based on the size of the blocks that are trading, it's going to fly through there because of that demand. That's essentially what he's saying. The negative side of the trade or the risk part of the trade is whoever is absorbing all of those shares on the offer might have a lot more to sell. And what happens is they might lift, making it meaning so that they get off the offer and then maybe it goes up five or six cents. And then they come back and they start pounding the offer again with green prints, big green prints. If that doesn't go up, you better get you better hightail it out of there because that means that this seller is probably going to now go low offer and start shoving the thing down because they have more stock to sell than the person who is actively buying it. You can imagine trying to teach that over and over and over again. It has to be done in the context. And this is kind of cool to watch this 5,000 share print that happened on the offer and what happens after that. So you can imagine that this is significantly easier when you're only watching one or two stocks. You'll notice the stocks that Fred's calling that out in, He's calling it out in BROS, which is a little bit less liquid, uh, which means that time and sales matter quite a bit. Um, because the less shares, the less liquidity there, big orders are going to matter. He'll call it out in AMC and some of those, I forgot was the other stock, ATER, I think it was a couple of days ago. So he's locked in on one trade. He has one time and sales window. You could even possibly have a couple of stocks in there, quite honestly. It'll tell you the stock and the time and sales, which I think that is how he has it. So you'd go in there and you would put in multiple stocks, let's say two or three stocks, you are only watching the block prints. You're not watching all this. You're not even watching the chart, quite honestly. He probably has this somewhere off on a different screen, which is how I do it. Um, and you're just noticing all of a sudden it's lighting up 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 7,000, 9,000 green. And you're like, whoa, what's going on in that stock? Then he pulls it up and then he starts to watch where those prints are happening at the offer and looking to see if it moves through that price. That's where he said, get ready, it's going through. That's essentially what he's watching when he's watching it. So I thought it was kind of cool to have a video within a video, kind of like the matrix here, um, to just walk through time and sales so we can give some examples. And I know Pat Cross just typed in there. Um, if everybody happens to be in the community during the day, Pat actually calls out a lot of these ideas as well with Fred, where he's noticing prints happening and um, not straight up calling a reversal, um, but, but pointing it out in a way that, the way that I word it, the terminology is the tape, something just changed on the tape. 